The next day we broke camp and moved on toward Butte, Montana. As we moved west, the mountains got bigger and the sky got bluer. About 90 miles east of Butte, we got off the interstate for an ice cream cone. We found an ice cream place and pulled the old van and trailer in by a picnic table. We shut her down and got out. God, that ice cream was good. It was Sunday afternoon and the clouds started rolling across the big blue sky. We got back in the van and turned the key and there was no sound. Oh shit, Yahoo, amen. The starter was broke. Big Gene started laughing. I said in great musical disgust, what's the damn funny? He said, don't worry, John. When you're with me, it's like being in God's pocket. I said, well, God, what do we do now? He said, we need to find a parts store and get a Ford starter. Well, let me tell you now, the exit sign where we got off the interstate didn't even have a gas station. Two houses, a Dairy Queen, and a highway patrol building with one cop car. I walked over to the cop shop. Glory, hallelujah, the door was open. I strolled in and hollered, anyone here? And a voice hollered, yep, be right with you. A young officer came out. He said, may I help you? I said, yeah, I need a starter for an 83 Ford van. We broke down over here at the Dairy Queen. He said, hang on a minute. He turned to grab the phone. He said he, as he dialed, my uncle lives next door and has a garage. I'll see if he's back from vacation. I crossed my fingers. His uncle needed the, the make and the model, and I told the young cop, and he hung up and said, Uncle Joe will meet you over at the Dairy Queen. I walked back to tell Gene the cavalry was coming, and he was sitting at the picnic table eating another ice cream cone, smiling from ear to ear. An old truck drove up, and a guy got out and said, You fellas got to be the luckiest guys on the road. I said, Why? He said, This is the only starter for an 83 Ford van for over 100 miles. Ten minutes later, it was on, and we paid Joe $90 and left laughing with ice cream in Gene's beard. We'd been on the road for almost a month. We were down to about $150 and heading toward Butte. We stopped and filled the van with gas, and there went another $40. We pulled over and spent the night at a truck stop. The next morning, we were up at sunup. We pulled into Butte about 9 a.m. and pulled up in front of a Mexican bar called the Cantina. An old guy our age was sweeping the sidewalk, and we stopped, and I got out and looked this man in the eye and said, Good morning, sir. Do you own this establishment? He said, Yes. I handed him a 45 record and a press kit and said, I'm your new entertainer. I said, Put this on your jukebox, and we'll be staying for uh, a week. Uh, it won't cost you a thing. Tips and tapes will make us enough money. Uh, where can we park our trailer? He put down his broom, shook my hand, opened the door, walked into the bar, opened the jukebox, put my record on, pushed the buttons, and on came my song. He smiled and walked behind the bar and said, Coffee? I said, Yeah. Have you got enough for my grandfather? He said, Yeah. Mountain John, tell Gramps to park that trailer behind the bar. I like your record. You can stay a week. I said, well, we'll be leaving Sunday morning. He said, get that rig parked and I'll get the coffee on. We stayed one week and made two or three hundred dollars. We also ate some of the finest Mexican food anybody ever ate. His wife was Mexican and she loved to cook. We told everyone goodbye and left early Sunday morning. We pulled out of Butte, Montana, going south about 20 miles, and then turned west toward the Pioneer Mountains. We followed a beautiful river to an old, almost deserted town called Big Hole River. We saw a sign for an old inn and another sign for homemade chocolate pie. The van pulled in on its own. We got out and went in. The place was clean and empty. We sat near the back by a window next to a wood stove. 
a man at the bar with a magical face and beard and a twinkle of mischief in one eye said, Have a seat, gents, and my wife will be right in to take your order. It wasn't long until a long-legged, beautiful, dark-haired woman came and took one look at us and grinned from ear to ear. You must realize that at this point we both had long white beards and we were 50 to 75 pounds overweight all the time. It was like seeing two sizes of Santa come through your door. You automatically knew that we didn't work in a bank or any other normal job. She was so pretty that we were rendered speechless for a moment and Gene spoke first and he asked, How's your pie? I started to laugh and said, we saw your sign for fresh chocolate pie. Her husband laughed and from behind the bar and said, you guys look like you would enjoy pie. We said, yes, please. She said, would that be all? And we both said, milk, please. She left grinning and we just started looking out the window and talking about how beautiful it was out here in Montana. As I recall, we were wearing t-shirts, jeans, tennis shoes, Pennsylvania police baseball hats. The Pioneer Mountains are in a very remote part of the USA. Not many people ever wander through there, much less stop for a pie. The man behind the bar stepped out and came to our table and said, Terry Rickert. He stuck out his hand. Gene took it first and said, I'm Big Gene and this is Mountain John. I grabbed his hand and shook it. He asked then, are you musicians? I said, yes, I am. He said, can you play us a tune? I said, can we eat your wife's pie first? The Road.